Doesn't it just drive you nuts when your expensive clippers start to fail? You might as well just chuck them in the bin and spend your day's takings on another set. But what if I showed you how to bring this back to new without spending an absolute fortune on new clipper equipment? We all love a new clipper delivery, but it is a painful experience when you're parting with the cash. And that's why I'm gonna refurb this for you right now. The first port of call with your clippers is to make sure that all the debris is gone. So brush off all the hair all the way around the clipper, get a can of clipper side spray, which is a great lubricant, and just go around the blade, spray it all. This keeps it cool and it lubricates it. Now that's the first thing I would do to try and get my clipper working nicely. The next thing I would do is give it a bath. So I'm gonna fill up this little tub with clipper side and look at this, switch the blade on and look at all that gunk that's coming out of it. That clipper blade is absolutely full of cut hair. So getting all this out should speed the clipper up. But I'm gonna give it a second bath again and let's try and get some more out. You'll see here that one bath isn't quite enough for the clipper. Just look at all of that coming out of there. <laughs> this will definitely make your clipper faster. That got it kind of clean, but what we need to do is get this blade off of here. So let's take these two screws off the back and they're quite easy to take off. They're very small screws. Take our blade off. Take that off. And you can see that there's a little bit of gunk still under there this off and let's take this off as well the lever so we're just taking three screws off all in so this piece will just slide off here and then That went flying. Can you actually believe we gave the clipper a bath and all of this is still inside it? No wonder it's going so slow. You can't even see the pin that rotates the blade in there. Most clipper sets come with a little brush, so let's use that. I'm gonna use the pointed side of the brush first to just pick this hair out of here. Take that spring out. Just use the pointy part of the brush to clear these bits out. How satisfying is it getting this rubbish out of here? This is what stops your lever moving fully backwards and forwards when this fills up with hair. It creates less space with which your lever can move. So cleaning these out can actually make a really big difference. Now that we can see what we're doing a little bit better, there's these two screws to remove here. This is magnetic in here, so screws don't just fall out, stuck. Now what I want to do is take the three screws off of the back plastic casing and I want to remove this lid. I'm only doing this to make sure that there's no sort of hair build up. This little plastic tool came with the mobile phone repair kit that I bought on Amazon. I'm using that to try and wedge the lid off because the lid is clipped on and I don't want to damage the lid with a screwdriver. So this is what I was looking for. I want to see if there's any hair that's managed to get into the mechanisms, any hair that's clogging up the insides of the clipper. And as you can see, one of the open parts of the clipper, one of the moving parts, the switch, there is some hair build up around there and there is some gunk around the edges. That's probably hair product and bits of hair. So I'm gonna clear all this out. I'm just gonna use my hairdryer on full blast and get all that cleared out of there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around the edge with my little lever tool and just scrape off all that gunk. I want it to form a nice seal when I put it back together to make sure that there's no hair getting in about the mechanisms or any hair clogging up the switch. I'll do the same with the lid. I'm gonna go around the lid with that little tool and just scrape off anything that's on there and then also brush off any gunk or anything like that that's on the casing. Okay, so I'm gonna 
click the lid back on now. Just clicks on. Now that's quite firm, but you do need to put the screws back in as well. There you can see the little pin that turns the blade. It's slightly offset. This is what we couldn't see before. Now if you remember, it was all surrounded by hair and no wonder it wasn't working smoothly. Now that's a lot cleaner and the blade's gonna move nice and free in there. Let's start to reassemble this now. So we'll take that front lip and put it back on. Now remember, you'll know which screws go in there because they are security screws. They look slightly different and that's the type of screw that I was using my phone repair kit on. So they are magnetic. This is gonna drive me nuts trying to get this back in here. Oh my goodness. There you go. So put both of them back in. And all the other parts of the clipper, clean them all off with a chamois leather or a cloth. Get them nice and clean, make sure there's no oil, no hair, no anything on them. And just lay them all out ready for reassembling. So the first thing to go back in is the spring. And the spring goes back in just like this. So you have it resting just there. Now you can take that plastic casing and it also slides into that lip at the top. Now, keep your thumb on that just now and place the moving blade on. Once you've put those two bits back in, you're gonna need the lever slide. So push that lever slide back in and there's a little bit of plastic just on the back of the housing which sits underneath the lever slide. So you can put the lever slide on top of that and that holds it in place without the spring pushing it out while we get reassembled. So we get the blade back on now. Just screw that blade in with your screws. Don't worry about lining it up right now, just screw it in, that's the main thing. Now when you put the lever back on, screw it on so that it's slightly less than hand tight. Okay, so you don't want it to be as tight as possible. We need to be able to move the lever and if it's too tight, you won't be able to move the lever. When you're lining up your blades, you want to have the lever in the up position and slide the bottom blade ever so slightly forward of the top blade, unless you're planning to zero gap your blade, in which case you would want them almost perfectly aligned with each other. For me with the wall senior, because I don't go right down to zero with it, I tend to have it about half a mil forward of the top blade. Well, the clippers are all back together and working like a dream. I hope you found that useful. I'll catch you in the next video.